G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. This video I'm going to talk to you about Mobber X Term and why I'm actually using this instead of putty when interacting with my Sunfire E4900. Now putty is the go-to SSH slash serial uh, terminal console emulator that most people migrate to, but quite frankly, I gotta be honest with you, I migrate to Mobber X Term now, and as you've seen in other videos of me working on the e-server, this is the emulation server that I am running. Not because of its X server capabilities, which is perfectly all right, but it has one advantage out of the box that Putty does not. Now, I do use WinSCP as well, primarily too, but what I like about this is there's the directory tree on SD0, the root hard drive, okay? Now, I can actually go into, say, ETC, like you would any other document, and I can go down to, let's go down to PFConf. I can right-click on PFConf, open it with the default text editor, and there is pf.conf there ready for me to run. So I don't even need to run Nano because I can actually edit it through Mobber X term. And this is part of the other reason that when I was told there was no point me getting a frame buffer for the E4900, I thought, well, why bother? I've got Mobber X term here. It's the closest thing I've got to having graphics, for want of a better term. But the fact that I get this... Now, to give you a couple, bit of insight here, I'll just close that one. If I go back to my connections that are available, I've got my Indian firewall SSH, I've got straight into OpenBSD, and then I've got uh, SSC0, which is over here. Now I've got that as a detached tab. And there's the show environment command coming straight out of SSC0. So, and there's a myriad of other reasons that I actually figured that when I was told, don't bother about getting a frame buffer because it's gonna waste money, um, I figured he was right because it is going to waste money. I can go into the mount directory and there's the stuff directory which is RSD1A, the second hard drive in the D240. I can go into my home directory and you'll see there I've got a backup of my entire documents folder from my main computer there. So in actual fact I don't need um, a frame buffer in the e-server. Now, the reason I use this instead of putty, especially in an SSH scenario, as well as a serial scenario, is because of this. Because under SSH, I get a directory tree, as you can see there. So, as you know, I'm a massive rap for Mobber X term. And frankly, I think it's probably one of the best X server front end systems out there free. Now this is the free version. As you know, if I could support them monetary wise, I would, but because I have no money, I gotta use the free version. But even the free version is super, super powerful. To give you some other insight as well, if we go up and click on session, you've got a whole pile of sessions to pick from. Now there's XDMCP, which will run with Solaris for those that know how to set up re remote root GUI with uh, Solaris 10. We've got remote desktop protocol. We've got a VNC service. We've got an FTP, a secure FTP, standard serial, file transfer, a flat out shell, a normal browser, and of course, Mosh. This is why I also figured that there's no point me getting a frame buffer because running OpenBSD, as um, TJ said. Everything I'm using OpenBSD for, there is no point me having a GUI, okay? So I thought, well, I can save myself some money on a frame buffer for the e-server, the e and I'll just use this. Now, the V490, that might be a different story. I may put a frame buffer in that, I don't know. But considering with the V490, I can do the same thing with the V490 as what I can do here with OpenBSD, or with the e-server, I'm sorry. There's no point me um, running a frame buffer. 
because I can actually do a lot of it here. And as I was told, with what I'm using the e-server for currently, there's no advantage to having a frame buffer. Go and have a look at MobRx term. Um, I think most people out there who are like me, still working in serial comms and stuff like that with these larger servers, you may find MobRx term is very, very handy um, to chase as well. Uh, thank you very much for your comment, mate. I'd suggest you go and have a look at MobRx term as well. Uh, it's just, it is so easy to set up. Um, I'll give you a quick tour of the setup of it. So you've got SSH, and then you've got, you know, you can set up all your terminal settings, as you can see there. You've got all your network settings. You can set up uh, SSH gateway systems as well. You've got full advanced. Your XDCMP settings, same scenario. Your VNC settings, again, the same scenario. Also network settings, which you can punch it through a SSH gateway. You've got standard FTP. You've got um, secure FTP up there as well, as you can see. So I really recommend you go and have a look at it. If you can afford to support them, please do. But as I said, I love this program. I use it daily with the e-server, especially when I'm just tweaking things a little bit. You've got to remember, I'm still trying to tweak this system. The other handy thing with Mobber Term 2 is you can upload from the host to the remote. So if you haven't got, say, a network share running, like I have, where I've got Samba shares and everything running, and you want to upload directly to uh, the server's hard drive, MobRx term will allow you to do it by default. So go and have a look at it for yourselves. I love this program. I use it. I recommend it to a number of people. Some people say, well, no, I'm happy with putty. Well, okay, if you're happy with putty, you're happy with putty. Personally, this is what I use. Even the serial console outside, the um, terminal emulator, for want of a better term, runs MobRx term, as you all know. Anyway, quick video there. Stick around. I've uh, got the follow-up to the bedroom PC coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, and the Twitter feed. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.